Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do both a bisque firing and a glaze firing. And I'm going to demo this on both a kiln with a kiln sitter and also on a kiln with a digital display. The first firing that you're going to do with your clay is called a bisque firing. Now you want to wait until your clay is dry to put it in the kiln. So when your students are working with it and they first finish, the clay is going to be really wet. Maybe it's fast forward 24 hours later and it's going to become what's called leather hard. And I describe this to my students as it's kind of like your shoe where it's a solid thing, but it's also still a little bit squishy and it's flexible and can move around. The clay is going to feel really cold at that point because there's still a lot of of water in it. Now, as the clay dries out, you're going to see the color change and it's going to feel less cold. So a piece of greenware that would be ready to fire, an example would be a piece like this. Now, depending on how thick your clay is, that's going to um, determine whether or not your clay is going to dry completely and be ready to fire. Um, for elementary settings, I definitely recommend uh, to my students not to make a solid meatball of clay because I don't know if it's dry on the inside. If we're creating something like that, we would make a little pinch pot and turn it upside down to create the project so that that circle is hollow on the inside and we're not having thick pieces of clay because that is when you have explosions. So if you had put some clay into the kiln that wasn't quite greenware and there was still water in there, what would happen is as your kiln heats up, the water gets bigger, right? And expands. Now I explain this to my students as when mom and dad are making macaroni and cheese or spaghetti on the stove and the water is boiling, it gets bigger, right? And it takes up more space. That's going to happen inside of those clay projects if there's still wet and then you're going to have cracks or explosions. Now to avoid that just make sure projects are completely dry and you have students create pieces that are thin. When you're loading up the kiln for a bisque firing it's completely okay for the pieces to touch. You can even stack pieces on top of each other and really fill up your kiln. When you're doing a glaze firing, you're going to need to separate the pieces so that they are not touching. For either firing bisque or glaze, when you're putting items into the kiln, you want to give at least an inch to an inch and a half, two inches from the coils on the outside edge of the kiln. The clay that I like to use is a red clay. And the reason that I like it is it's just not as noticeable when we get to the step of glazing if a student misses a spot or two compared to with the white clay. Now the clay is called red clay, but it does look like a chocolate brown color when it is wet and we're starting out. I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's been bisque fired. So it's gone through the kiln once. The color changes a lot because all the water now has been cooked out of it. So you would say this is bisque ware. And how I have my students remember this is you could eat a biscuit off of this now. It is hard, it is dry, the shape is permanent. Next, we would glaze our pieces and then do a second firing. After that second firing, our pieces would look like this. And that's when you want to teach your students that these pieces now are called ceramics. It's no longer look at my clay, it's look at my ceramics piece because this has now got permanent color on it. The shape is permanent. It's very different from what we started out with. If you have a top loading kiln like this, you don't want to put your pieces on the bottom of the kiln. These little stands that you see here, I also have them underneath and this is lifted up from the bottom. Now I'm going to be doing a glaze firing next. So I'm going to keep these little stands in there and put those underneath the pieces of artwork uh, that I'm putting into the kiln. I find it easier at the elementary level to just have students paint the inside and the sides of their projects, but not to glaze the bottom. Um, I also just as an added measure will use stands and there's two different kinds that I have. One is kind of like a little three tripod that you would just set underneath your projects and set those inside the kiln. The second one is these little triangular pieces and that works really nice because you can just set down a bunch of them and then put pieces on top. Thank you. 
when you run out of room, you need to add another shelf. So you probably noticed that there were stands inside of there. I would use three or four of these. If I'm using four, we're talking one in each corner to balance so that we can add another shelf level to the kiln. These are really heavy. When they break, they are very expensive to replace, so be really careful with them. So that things do not get stuck on your kiln shelves, there is a product called Kiln Wash that you can treat um, the shelves with so that the glaze is not as likely to stick. So your kiln is all loaded up and you're ready to fire it. If you have a kiln setter inside of your kiln, you'll need these little plyometric cones. What this essentially is, is a small little piece of clay and it's just a fail safe to turn off your kiln um, in the event that you forget to turn it off or something happens with your timers. So I'm gonna be putting this piece of clay inside to the kiln in a part that's called the kiln setter. Now to activate that, there's a little flap here. I need to lift this up. And then there is part that I'm gonna press down here with my finger. Inside, there is two little metal brackets that are gonna go down. And when I'm pushing down on this button, you kind of hear it, then that makes the third one, the more rounded one that you see there, go up. And so I'm setting that cone straight across. So that's what it looks like from inside of the kiln that the cone is sitting right in there. Now the cone is the same number or it should be the same number as the clay you're using. So if you're using low fire clay that's like an 06, then this is going to match the clay that you are using. If you're, uh, you forget to turn your kiln off, this clay will melt and will bend and it will go like this. And you heard that sound, it has turned your kiln off. So it's kind of a backup. You'll wanna make sure that you do that every time that you are firing. Once that's in there, I'm going to close the kiln lid. And just a word of caution, this apparently is the most fragile part of your kiln. Then it's also the easiest part that could accidentally crack. So be very careful with your kiln lid. You're gonna bring that down. If you have a mechanism to lock that, you're gonna to want to use that. And then we're gonna to come to the front and set the timer. So I'm gonna set this timer for eight hours. This um, particular firing is a glaze firing. So when I'm doing a glaze firing, my idea is that I'm trying to get it up to the highest temperature fast and then I wanna keep it at that high temperature for a long time. When I'm doing a bisque fire, it needs to be kind of low and slow. So I'm gonna be bumping up the temperature throughout the day very slowly. With the bisque, with the glaze, I'm going much faster with increasing those temperatures. I need to turn on the power to the kiln. So over here on the wall, I'm gonna flip this switch and that gives electric power to this kiln. There's also an on-off switch on the side same kind of lever, just smaller. So I'm going to turn that on. Then I'm going to select that when it comes on, I want it to be on low. So I'm turning all three of these dials to low. And then there's a little white button right there that I need to press. And then you'll hear the kiln start to go. So that is the go button. Now that this is on, I would monitor this throughout the day and slowly bump up the temperature. If this is a bisque fire, this is a glaze fire. So I'm going to go a little bit faster throughout the day, increasing those temperatures. I want to make sure that it's at high for the longest amount of time possible. Um, but I'm going to start doing that every few hours that I'm bumping up that temperature. And I'm going to show you on the digital uh, display how that looks differently to set up a firing. If you're lucky enough to have a kiln with the front digital panel, it is even easier to fire. This one is a front loading kiln, which I highly recommend. It is just easier as you get older. Um, if you're, you know, pregnant, just all the stages of art teaching life, it, it's just easier. Also just the heat of leaning into that other kiln is a lot where this cools off to me a lot faster. So what we're gonna do is secure the front of the kiln so that it's not gonna open up. And we need to turn power onto the kiln over here on the wall. So it switch that on and then there's an on and off switch here. So once you turn that on, the power is going to light up. Now what's nice about these kilns is that you program them so that they are already um, bumping up on their own. So you're not changing the temperature 
throughout the day. You just have to designate if it's a bisque firing or a glaze firing. So for me, I press the number four and then it's showing user one. So user one is the bisque um, program. User two for me is the glaze. So once I see user one, I'd simply just press start and then it's gonna go through telling me all of the ramp holds that it's going to do. Pretty much just keep pressing start a million times to approve all of these. Finally come to that little start button on the screen there, press start again. And you have to wait and listen for it to begin. So these little lights here, they're representing the three different areas inside of the kiln and it's showing you what the temperature is. So it's 81 degrees inside the kiln already. It's a really hot day. It is January right now when I'm recording this and I think it is 73 degrees outside and we ran the kiln yesterday so it is really warm in this room today but you can see slowly the temperature is going to start to bump up so you can monitor it for the digital kilns that's really all you have to do you wait till the end of the school day and it will say complete you just shut the power off on the kiln and also shut the power off from the wall as well. Make sure that before you fire your kiln, you check out my video on kiln safety next.